morning, everyone. Welcome to day five of the Healthcare Scholarships Virtual Experience. I am Serene, one of the scholarship officers with Healthcare Scholarships and Talent. Today, we have an exciting day of programs with our education partners lined up for you. Welcome to Learn and Explore Pharmacy. Learn more about the Bachelor's of Pharmacy Honours Curriculum at National University of Singapore and hear from student ambassadors about their life as a pharmacy student. Before we begin, if you have any questions for our speakers, please feel free to type it into the Q&A function. If you would like to direct your question to a specific speaker, please kindly indicate it in your question. Lastly, if you see a question that you are interested in being answered, please upvote the question. We will have Q&A sessions. Uh, through, we have two Q&A sessions, one for the profs and one for our student ambassadors. So now I would like to pass the time on to Prof. Tree. Prof. Tree, please. Thank you, Serene. Uh, let me just... Uh... Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you see my slide? Okay, so um, what I'll do now is that, um, uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Prof. Chui Wai Kiong. I'm one of the senior uh, member of staff uh, from the Department of Pharmacy at the National University of Singapore. Uh, I'm also um, uh, the co-director of the Bachelor of Pharmacy uh, Owners Degree Program. Uh, where, which was uh, been uh, um, offered uh, last year. So it was the first time that we launched this program last year. So we are really quite exciting, uh, excited about uh, sharing this with you. Um, what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is to uh, share with you some information about the Department of Pharmacy at the National University of Singapore, uh, as well as some information about the help the, uh, the pharmacy profession and what it is like, uh, what is the profession is going to be like in the future. And of course, uh, with the future in mind, uh, the education, the pharmacy education will need to be uh, relevant for those who are doing the course and therefore a transformative pharmacy education for the future practice uh, is something that is important. Now, uh, before I start, I, I just like to also congratulate all those students who have just recently received your A-level results. And of course, for some of the students, uh, you've received your results before that. Uh, and, and another congratulation to you is in that uh, you've achieved a very important milestone uh, in, your, uh, in your life. Uh, and now you're looking forward, uh, going into uh, another uh, page of your life where you're uh, you will be embarking on your tertiary education. Uh, out there, there are just so many programs uh, available. So uh, which one will fit you? And, and today I'm just going to be uh, sharing with you uh, some information about the pharmacy profession, as well as the uh, uh, the pharmacy program in NUS. So let me begin by sharing with you some information about uh, the Department of Pharmacy at the National University of Singapore. As you can see in this slide, um, uh, a little bit about our history. Uh, we are 116 years old this year. In fact, we started in 1905 as the Department of Pharmaceutics. Uh, pharmaceutics is the science of formulation, uh, which is used to make uh, the medicinal product. At the time, we were part of the College of Medicine, and because uh, uh, that program was open to trained uh, medical students or uh, physicians, and at that time, it was thought that uh, they needed to know something about compounding of medicinal products, and that was how pharmacy uh, uh, began. And over the years, uh, we have evolved. Uh, we became a department of pharmacy within uh, the National University of Singapore, as well as the Faculty of Science. And today we stand strong at 116 years old. Um, in the department, there are uh, about 44 faculty members. All right, these are all the academic staff. Uh, and I will uh, share a little bit more information about them later on. Uh, and supporting us, we have uh, about 27 of, uh, support staff who are the technical uh, laboratory technologies as well as the admin staff. In terms of undergraduate students, we have a total of about 770 
undergraduate students. And they come from basically two different programs. And in addition to that, we look after 69 postgraduate students. And these again come from different programs, which I will uh, share a little bit more info later on. Now, we are in fact the only pharmacy school in Singapore, and therefore we attract the best students. And it is also because we are the only pharmacy school in Singapore, uh, we are always uh, innovating our program. We are always uh, thinking about how to uh, deliver the best program for our students. And because of that, you can see how we have emerged as uh, number one in Asia, right? according to the Asia QS uh, ranking in 2020 in the category of pharmacy and pharmacology. And around the world, uh, in the world QS ranking for 2020, we were ranked 11th. Right? So uh, we have a very rich uh, history. Uh, and uh, if you join us, uh, you will be part of this very uh, uh, important and a very uh, lively group of uh, uh, people. Now, in terms of the academic programs that we offer uh, for the undergraduate study, we have uh, basically three of them. All right. First of all, uh, is the professional program, which is the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours Degree. Uh, this is a relatively new program that has uh, that was uh, kind of evolved from the Bachelor of Science Pharmacy program uh, that was how it was named before. Uh, in addition to that, we also offer a Bachelor of Science Pharmaceutical Sciences Honours Degree program, right? Uh, and then we also have a Pharmaceutical Science uh, minor. And uh, in terms of postgraduate uh, study, all right, uh, if you like to, uh, if you're graduated from the program, would like to come back and and do a higher uh, degree with us. Uh, this is where uh, you can ha have a selection of programs for you. Uh, you could do a, a PhD, for example, uh, or master's uh, in pharmaceutical science or pharmacy practice, and this can be done by research. Or you could do it by coursework. Uh, and we also have a master of science uh, in pharmaceutical science and technology. Uh, for those of you who are practicing as pharmacists and would like to learn a little bit more about clinical pharmacy, uh, you could come back for the Doctor of Pharmacy program. And uh, we also have residency programs uh, that are for those who are keen to learn a little bit more skills in clinical skills in managing uh, different types of patients. All right, and, and the, 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 the area of uh, study here is ambulatory care. And of course, for those adult learners, uh, if you want continuing education kind of programs, you could also sign up with our usage uh, department. Now for the undergraduate programs, uh, you can see that we offer two uh, programs. One is a professional uh, program that leads to the Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours degree, which is aim at uh, uh, educating you in, and transforming you into a healthcare provider. Uh, and on the other hand, we also offer the Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. And this is basically a science degree, but uh, it's focusing on a very specialized uh, area of pharmaceutical science. Now, the reason why we have two programs now is that, as you know, science is rapidly changing and advancing. And uh, because of that, uh, you find that uh, in terms of uh, healthcare, all right, uh, there is a lot of uh, new drugs that are being used. There's a lot of new practices uh, being innovated. Uh, there's really a lot of uh, uh, changes are happening. And with that, you find that you need special kind of competency to be able to practice as a pharmacist. And on the other hand too, you find that uh, the science in pharmaceutical science, in, in medical science and biomedical sciences are also advancing in a very fast pace. Uh, and because of that, you find that it, um, the, if you want to study, uh, have a good science, uh, scientific education, uh, then you really need to spend a bit more time uh, in uh, learning about the pharmaceutical sciences. And uh, the difference between these two programs is that uh, if you choose to come into the pharmaceutical science program, then uh, you will be uh, learning basically mainly the pharmaceutical sciences. Uh, and because uh, you do not deal with, uh, you do not learn about the 
the patient aspect, you do not learn about the therapeutic, uh, the use of medications, you find that you will have a bit more time to explore other opportunities. Uh, for example, you could take a minor in other uh, areas or, or you could do a double degree. Uh, so it's more flexible uh, and in the end, uh, you end up with uh, a science uh, degree that will also bring you into uh, whichever areas in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in, in your career uh, that you aspire to be, right? What is different uh, from uh, uh, the healthcare professional program here, which is the Bachelor of Pharmacy program, is that uh, we, uh, this program will offer you uh, uh, a program that you will learn to become uh, a pharmacist. And in this case, yeah, again, the kind of competencies that you'll be learning will be all, all the different types of knowledge and skill sets. And also we like to uh, uh, develop the kind of professionalism and also uh, uh, behavior and competencies that is required to be a pharmacist so that you can carry out your uh, uh, professional activities independently and safely. And of course, uh, at the end of it, uh, with a pharmacy degree, uh, you could also uh, be registered with uh, the Singapore Pharmacy Council uh, upon successful completion of the pre-registration training program, right? So that's the main difference uh, between these uh, two programs. And in terms of uh, the faculties, uh, the academic staff who will be teaching you, you find that we are really a whole bunch of really very uh, interesting, uh, very friendly people, right? We have uh, on one hand, uh, uh, those who are pharmacists, on the other hand, those are very creative pharmaceutical scientists. And together, uh, we work together and deliver the program to you. And we are often call us, we often call ourselves as the family, all right? Uh, and our core values are really uh, anchored on integrity and commitment uh, of uh, to uh, beyond self. Next, I'd like to share a little bit of the information uh, with you with regards to the pharmacy profession, right? So you may ask, all right, who is the pharmacist? All right, so pharmacist is uh, a member of the healthcare uh, profession. They are professional and they are registered, all right? They are licensed experts and we call ourselves pharmacists. So as pharmacists, uh, we are knowledgeable in both the science and the practice that pertains to the production and uh, the therapeutic use of medicines. So we are uh, often, we, we say we are the experts in medicine. So uh, if you have any questions about how you to use certain medicines, what are the products, all right? That's where you can go and ask the pharmacist. Uh, as a pharmacist, we often work together with other healthcare uh, providers, all right, of course, the physicians, uh, the nurses as well, all right. So uh, because of that, uh, we work together, we're able to also optimize the use of medications uh, for, the, for the patients. And many of these are uh, done uh, in the hospital, in the polyclinics, as well as, as the community uh, pharmacy. Uh, and because we work very closely with the physicians, and therefore, we also need to have some uh, knowledge about the clinical uh, sciences, uh, the clinical uh, aspect of uh, uh, medicine. Uh, on the other hand, because we are the ones who are uh, looking after the product and therefore uh, the pharmaceutical science aspect is very important to us. Uh, as pharmacists too, all right, we also apply some of our specialized knowledge, particularly uh, in the area of the product. Uh, and this is where we provide indirect patient care uh, and when we do that, uh, we are really uh, working from the angle of uh, from the pharmaceutical industry or the regulatory agency, uh, as well as clinical trial management. All right. So this is where we make sure that uh, the medications, the product that you're receiving are of the highest quality. Uh, and this is where, uh, as pharmacists, uh, we do also have a, a role to play. As you know, that uh, the technology, advancement of technology, uh, automation, as well as uh, informatics uh, and artificial intelligence, all these are in fact changing uh, the industry, all right? No matter which industry you are in now, all right? These three uh, components are really making a lot of changes. 
and healthcare is not spared. All right? Healthcare is also undergoing a lot of changes uh, because of the empowerment of technology, automation, and informatics. And in this uh, context, all right, the practice of pharmacy is also transforming, all right, making different social or societal impact. And with that too, all right, pharmacists will need to uh, change, need to innovate, all right, so that we can provide uh, better types of care, specialized kind of care to meet both the individual as well as the population needs uh, in terms of medication supply. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are also looking at bringing uh, pharmaceutical care closer to the, the people, all right? So we bring them to the home, and that's where community practice uh, is going to be uh, something that is uh, uh, going to be developed uh, more in the future. Now, uh, this was mentioned by uh, the health minister, Mr. Gang Kim Yong, all right, uh, in 2015. All right, and he advocated that pharmacists will need to play a bigger role in patient care. Uh, and within Singapore, all right, pharmacists will have to do more in the future, uh, given Singapore's aging population and also the very high prevalence of chronic diseases. And because many of these uh, patients will need medications, and therefore uh, pharmacists will have an important role to play. Uh, in addition to that, uh, pharmacists will need to also expand the roles. Uh, in the hospitals, in the clinics, polyclinics, as well in the community setting. And with this in the background, uh, the, the reasons uh, that uh, uh, the healthcare is really changing uh, quite rapidly, uh, what we need to do is to, we need to be innovative and, and also make sure that pharmacists are prepared, all right, for uh, uh, all these future needs that are emerging. All right. One of the expansion of roles uh, that uh, you will see is the, uh, the class of uh, specialist pharmacists. All right. These are pharmacists who are very experienced uh, and have taken also additional uh, education and practice uh, uh, residency program, for example, and they become a specialist pharmacist. And in Singapore today, uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, different areas of specialization, ranging from cardiology, critical care, geriatrics, infectious disease, oncology, as well as uh, pediatrics and psychiatry. Now, being practicing as a specialist pharmacist, you basically uh, will know your medications in these particular areas very well. And you will also be working very closely with uh, the, the, the specialist uh, physician, all right? the oncologists, uh, the geriatricians, uh, the oncologists uh, as well. All right? So here, uh, because uh, the medications are quite specialized and therefore you need to have special knowledge uh, for that. Uh, another role expansion is prescribing, all right? There are uh, pharmacists who are now trained uh, to uh, work closely with a healthcare team, uh, who, which, could be, uh, which could comprise both the doctors and the nurses. And these, uh, this team basically uh, carry out what we call collaborative prescribing. So in other words, uh, when the team is looking after some patients and if the patient's medications needs to be changed, then uh, the, the pharmacist will be able to uh, write a prescription. And of course, this is, uh, uh, needs to be uh, and, uh, discussed with uh, the, the healthcare team which is also uh, looking after that team, all right? So uh, this is another area where uh, there is an expansion of role for the pharmacist. So in addition to dispensing roles uh, or supply role, we also can have a uh, prescribing roles. Now, um, just to uh, put things in, uh, in, in the current context for you, all right, and what are the roles of pharmacists uh, during times of emergency? Uh, uh, and all of you are aware now we are in a global uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, and, and where does, uh, where's the pharmacist? So where, what does the pharmacist do uh, during this time? All right, so this is where emergency care uh, is something that is uh, uh, what the pharmacists are also uh, practicing. Uh, what the pharmacists will do uh, in times of emergency is just to, is to make sure that there's sufficient supply of medications. So it is important that uh, when medication is required, uh, there will be uh, a good supply, all right? There won't be disruption to the supply of medication. Uh, and this is not only for 
uh, medications that will treat uh, the, the COVID-19, for example. It, it also means that, uh, for example, during the lockdown, where people are not able to get out of their homes, right, and they are on chronic disease uh, uh, medications, uh, pharmacies would be there to supply the medication uh, to them, all right, to make sure that there will not be a disruption in the supply of medicine for patients who are on chronic disease uh, medications. In addition to that, uh, pharmacists will also participate in the approval of emergency medication. Uh, for example, there are pharmacists in HSA who will be reviewing all the, uh, the new vaccine, for example. All right? So the clinical knowledge will help them all right, uh, to work together in the team of uh, other uh, uh, professionals and other expertise to make a, a, a decision on which product to use uh, for the people in Singapore. Uh, when uh, the product is available, for example, the vaccine, all right, the, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, some of the products needs to be prepared before they can be used. So pharmacists will be there to supervise the preparation of the injections. Uh, and once they are prepared, then they need to provide the appropriate storage conditions so that uh, uh, the integrity uh, of the uh, medications is, uh, is maintained. Uh, Pharmacies are also involved in crafting uh, guidelines for medication use. All right, uh, this is also in the time where uh, new guidelines will be required. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, pharmacies will also be monitoring uh, therapeutic outcomes of the treatments. Now, these are two examples to show you uh, what pharmacists are doing all right, in terms of uh, COVID-19. So Ms. Lo Hua-Ling, right, who works in the National Center of Infectious Diseases, I think you are familiar with this uh, venue. Uh, a lot of the COVID patients are, are brought there for isolation, uh, uh, for care. And as a pharmacist, uh, uh, Hua-Ling uh, basically worked uh, very closely with other healthcare providers, setting up uh, screening centers, pharmacies, uh, writing guidelines for treatments of COVID-19 patients, as well as also monitor uh, the treatment of uh, COVID-19 patients uh, when certain medications are being provided to them. Uh, in addition, all right, uh, Ms. Lo Kai Sin, for example, who works uh, from the Singapore General Hospital uh, out, as an outpatient pharmacist, uh, she is the one who uh, really provides uh, the supply of medications so that uh, to ensure that uh, supply is not disrupted. So medication delivery service in SGH is one of the services that are uh, being innovated and, and has uh, emerged. Uh, and uh, chronic med medications uh, uh, can be delivered to the patients without the patients leaving their homes. All right. So these are uh, some of the new uh, areas of uh, practice uh, of for the pharmacists. Now, this slide shows you uh, in a snapshot uh, about the no total number of pharmacists that are registered pharmacists that are found in Singapore. All right. So in terms of the national stock, uh, by the end of last year, uh, there are a total of 3,572 pharmacists. Uh, and where do they uh, work? All right, so many of them, uh, about 54%, slightly more than half of them are in patient care uh, setting, all right? And for patient care pharmacies, they work in restructured hospitals, uh, in private hospitals, community hospitals, polyclinics, retail pharmacies, and so forth. Um, there are also another one third of them uh, who are working in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and about uh, and the rest of them are either not working uh, or they're working overseas, all right? Uh, they are registered here because uh, they are still on the register. Now, if you are in the patient care setting, all right, uh, what kind of roles do you play or, and where do you work, all right? Uh, in the public sector, that will be mainly uh, the restructured hospitals, the polyclinics. Uh, if you're in the private sector, that's mainly the, the private hospitals and retail pharmacies. Or medical centers. Uh, within the, uh, the public sectors, you find that there are different also career paths within uh, uh, the, the hospitals. Uh, for example, uh, you could be uh, doing a lot more research uh, as a research pharmacist. This is where you bring problems in the, in the clinics, in the wards, you bring it back to the lab and you work out solutions uh, or better practices uh, and write better guidelines. Uh, for the use of medications. Uh, the professional aspects are those who are really uh, very uh, closely related to uh, providing 
uh, 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 the medication, the supply of medication. And these are those that many of you will be more familiar with and you'll encounter them more frequently. Uh, these are those who are doing the dispensing uh, of medications and those who are, who are purchasing medications, for, for example, and, and, and preparing medications uh, for those patients who are uh, warded, for example. All right, so this is the professional part. And of course, we also have the clinical part and these are those uh, who are the specialist pharmacists who specialize in a particular area of practice. And there are also non-specialist uh, clinical pharmacists who looks after chronic disease management uh, for patients, right? There are a lot of ambulatory care uh, clinics that are run solely by pharmacists, all right? And these are the, the generalists, they're not the specialists. Uh, they help the patients to optimize the use of uh, medications. In the non-patient care setting, in industry and others, all right, you'll find that uh, pharmacists are also working in lead, uh, regulatory affairs as well as in the academia. Right? Regulatory affairs are basically those uh, who are in the uh, Health uh, Sciences Authority, for example. Right? So they basically uh, look at uh, the uh, regulatory uh, of uh, medications, all right? registration of medications, uh, regulatory regulation of use of medications. Um, and those in the academia, like myself, who are uh, teaching at the university and doing research at university, there are also some pharmacists uh, who are educating pharmacy technicians uh, at the polyclinics. And in terms of private sectors in the non-patient setting, uh, patient care setting, uh, these are the, mainly the pharmaceutical companies, all right? And pharmacists in these areas, they are mainly involved in marketing, in manufacturing, uh, in clinical trials, as well as sales uh, and wholesales. So you can see that with a pharmacy degree, uh, and when you become a pharmacist, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you to, to go into. And of course, this will depend on your interest, depend on your aspiration, uh, and depends on what you'd like to achieve in life. Now, in terms of the number of uh, pharmacists in Singapore, all right, these are some uh, statistics for you. Uh, uh, in Singapore, we have about 0 0.63 registered pharmacists per uh, 1,000 population, and this number is growing over the years, all right? Compared to some of our other countries, you find that uh, our numbers are quite small, uh, uh, but this is also related to the practice model, all right? Now, you can see that uh, that's what the pharmacy profession is all about. Uh, and there's a lot of expansion of roles. And therefore, uh, at the university, when we provide the program for you, uh, we need to be uh, make sure that it's going to be relevant so that when you go out, you can fill up those uh, uh, vacancies in the workplace and then uh, 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 practice uh, as a pharmacist uh, at uh, the top of the license for yourself. Um, so you can see here that um, in the program, we aim to uh, uh, train you and educate you into a care provider. And as a care provider, all right, uh, you are also supported by six other intrinsic uh, 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 competencies or, or roles, all right? You, you will become uh, an effective communicator, uh, collaborator, uh, working with other healthcare professionals, a scholar, innovator, uh, you will lead uh, or manage uh, a group of uh, people. Uh, you will be professional uh, as well as uh, uh, advocating health uh, for your patients. And to be able to do that, uh, we will know that, uh, we'll be glad to know that uh, there will be, uh, 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 the program is uh, it's really uh, quite uh, multidisciplinary, all right? We're integrating basic science, clinical science, as well as system science. And there is also uh, experiential learning. And this is a competency-based uh, curriculum, and that's where uh, you learn the knowledge, you learn the skills, uh, as well as develop uh, certain behaviors, uh, professionalism along the way. Uh, this is a snapshot on uh, what the our program is about. Uh, it's a four-year program. Uh, at the end of it, uh, there's still a six months uh, pre-registration training to complete. Uh, and upon successful completion of that, you become a registered pharmacist. And there's another six months of uh, training, which is embedded in a four-year program. In terms of the learning philosophy, all right, uh, because uh, we are uh, educating you for a uh, career, uh, therefore the learning approach is quite different. All right, so it's 
very much self-directed learning uh, and you will give you a lot of opportunity to ask questions and we will emphasize a lot more on experiential learning. Uh, in terms of the learning activities, all right, uh, before you come into uh, the class, uh, you will do a lot more self-directed learning. You study on your own and also with your teammates. Uh, when you come into the class, we challenge you by asking a lot more questions. And uh, during the workshops, all right, this is where we uh, uh, try to get you to solve uh, problems, all right? applying the knowledge that you've learned to solve problems. There will be practicals because it's really quite science-based. Uh, there will be quite a lot of practicals that we go through. Uh, at the same time, you will learn to uh, develop patient care skills, all right? Uh, showing diabetic patients how to take their injections, uh, doing counseling, for example. Uh, there will also be experiential learning where you will be attached to community pharmacy, to, to clinics, uh, to pharmaceutical companies, where you will see how the pharmacies uh, uh, work in there and uh, in these workplaces. Uh, at the same time, you will also be doing a, uh, a project. So student life in, in NUS uh, pharmacy program is really quite vibrant. Uh, uh, while the program is quite, uh, 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 you study hard for the program, all right, it's, it's quite a, a, a multidisciplinary program. It's not that uh, straightforward but uh, there will also be play time, all right? Later on, you will hear from the students, all right, what are some of the activities uh, that they take part in. Uh, at the same time, we also do a lot of community work uh, uh, and students will go and visit uh, homes uh, of the people, all right? Uh, and they also go overseas for expedi uh, expedition, for example, right? So now I'd like to wrap up this particular uh, presentation by showing you a very short video to kind of summarize uh, what I've said uh, over the last few minutes. Your learning will take place not only in the classroom and laboratory, but also in the community where you will meet and work with real health professionals and healthcare consumers. The workplace and classroom activities will allow you to understand what you are learning better and you can also practice what you have learned in the classroom when you go on the attachment. Such learning activities where you are supported in every step of your learning from year to year ensure that you acquire the knowledge, skills and the attitude to enable you to be a functional pre-registration pharmacist. You will be capable of facing the challenges of the evolving healthcare landscape and the complexity of people whom you will be serving. We hope to innovate new roles and improve pharmaceutical practice within the healthcare system through research, the use of technology, enhancing the power of big data sets. These new skills require have been incorporated into a relevant and interactive curriculum where our students will take an active role in their learning journey and be ready as healthcare professionals of the future. As a leader in pharmacy education in Asia and as the only pharmacy program in Singapore, we are continuously reinventing ourselves to ensure that our graduates remain competitive and are equipped with the relevant knowledge and skills essential for their future careers. Thank you, Postree, for this wonderful sharing. Now I'd like to step into the Q&A portion. Uh, Prof. Ko would appreciate, um, thank you for joining us for this Q&A session too. So I have quite a number of questions that have been posted onto the um, website. So I'll just start off with the first question. What are the requirements for Bachelors of Pharmaceutical Sciences? Is it parked under the same requirements as Bachelors of Pharmacy? What is the ratio of the cohort to poly students? Um, from the questions, I think you're trying to ask about what, what are, are the A-level subjects to get into pharmaceutical science or pharmacy? Uh, 
pharmaceutical science, right? I believe it's pharmaceutical science. Yes, yes. So for that, I think you still need chemistry, uh, A-level chemistry or the equivalent. I think that's the only subject requirements. And the second part of the question, what is the ratio of the cohort to poly students? Um, I think it varies from year to year. So there will be some uh, vacancies uh, allocated aside for pharmacy, uh, for, for polytechnic uh, 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 graduates. Maybe I can add on to that. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Ko, and with me, uh, I'm supporting Prof. Tree in this Q&A session. Very nice to see all of you, and congratulations again for coming to this milestone, an important milestone. All right. Um, in the, uh, with us is also uh, Dr. Ong. All right. Rishi, do you want to say hello? Yeah. All right. And our students also, Wee Kang and uh, Chi Hon. You all want to show your face? Hello. And they are all scholars. All right. Okay. Now, um, I'll just like to add on to the question. So, uh, requirements for uh, farm science, all right, and also pharmacy. So you need to have uh, a level chemistry, all right, and also one other science subject. It can be bio, physics, uh, math, or further math, all right. Okay, so these are the prerequisites, good passes uh, in these, all right. And is it under the same requirements? So in terms of prerequisites, it's the same, all right. But for farm science, you have to apply through the College of Humanities and Sciences, the new college. So I would encourage you to find out more in our open house on this coming Saturday. Huh? Watch out for it. Okay, what's the ratio of cohort to poly students? So typically about, um, not just poly, but including IB and also other uh, equivalent, equivalent qualifications, right? Typically maybe 10 to 15% through the aptitude-based admission, right? Whereby uh, the applicants may be called up for interview, all right? Okay, so again, uh, the number uh, varies from cohort to cohort. Okay, yeah, all right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ko. Uh, proceeding on to the next question, what are the fields that graduates can go into other than being a pharmacist? Um, right, as, oh, okay, uh, William, yeah. you, can, you can go ahead. Okay, sure, all right. As uh, Prof. Tree has presented, so besides being a pharmacist, in fact, being a pharmacist actually uh, allows you to go into different sectors, all right? For example, we are in academia, we are teaching and doing research. Uh, of course, most of the graduates will uh, be working in a hospital, all right? Or working in the uh, uh, polyclinic or in retail, uh, community pharmacy, all right? Some are working with the Ministry of Health, right? In regulatory, some are in marketing, some are... Uh, doing yeah, sales and marketing. Some are doing other kinds of research, right? So there are various aspects of pharmacy, all right, that the graduates can uh, consider working in. And of course, if along the way, all right, the graduate decided that, oh, I want to try something new, by all means, all right? We have um, graduates who end up becoming pilots also, all right? So no, you do not need, need to limit your, your capability or what you can do after you graduate. Some set up their own businesses, uh, become entrepreneurs. Some become CEOs of companies, of uh, hospitals, and so on and so forth, all right? Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. Is there a higher demand for pharmacists or pharmaceutical scientists? I think in terms of pharmacists, uh, I, I, you can see those figures that I've shown you uh, that uh, the number, the figure is uh, increasing, uh, especially with the expansion uh, of, uh, 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 of roles all right, for pharmacists. And for the pharmaceutical scientists, uh, because it's a science degree, so you can actually go into uh, any uh, particular areas that you like, all right? So having a science degree in pharmaceutical science doesn't mean that you need to uh, be practicing only in the pharmaceutical uh, industry, all right? Uh, uh, just writing on that previous questions, all right? We, we do find some of our pharmacy uh, graduates uh, uh, previously who have also gone into 
uh, allied kind of industry, such as the food industry, uh, as well as the cosmetic industry, right? Because the science that they learned, uh, for example, uh, in pharmaceutics, uh, that's basically like making creams and, and ointments, all right? And, and instead of putting in the medication, uh, you put in some uh, aromatic oils, all right? You, you get a perfume, all right? So those kind of scientific uh, knowledge will, will also help uh, uh, graduates to, to venture into other areas. Anyone else would like to add to Prof. Tree's uh, remarks? If not, I can proceed on to the next question. Um, maybe I'll just add on. Okay. Is there a Thank you, Dr. Of pharmacists or pharmaceutical scientists. Um, okay, again, it depends on um, the situation, all right? So offhand, there's no direct answer, all right? There's always a demand for pharmacists as well as pharmaceutical scientists, all right? Um, as you can see with COVID, you know, the knowledge of medications, healthcare, it's so important right now, all right? Yeah. So pharmaceutical scientists are also important, okay? The development of COVID vaccine, you know, treatments and so on, even masks, you know, all these would also need all this pharmaceutical uh, information, all right? And knowledge, all right? So um, the demand is always there, okay? It's hard to say, you know, um, I guess the question comes from, should I apply for this? Or, you know, it's because of that uh, basis, right? Should I apply for this? or apply for that because of which is a greater demand, all right? I would say there's always demand for both, all right? Uh, but do take note of the class size, all right? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Cole. Actually, um, did your answer actually re relates to the next question. So the next question is, how would COVID impact the pharma industry demand? And also how would a big tech technological company, I believe, disrupt a pharmacy's role? Anyone from the panel can take this question. Uh, maybe, right, maybe I, um, okay, we go ahead. Start first. Okay, so right, the question on how would the COVID, COVID is it? Yeah, uh, affect the pharma industry. Yeah, the demand for it. Yes, yeah. So it's very clear with COVID or any big outbreak, all right? Uh, it's very important that we have all the healthcare professionals working together as a team. And Prof. Tree very clearly presented in the COVID how do pharmacists contribute, all right, in terms of the distribution of the medications, uh, home delivery, in terms of getting the, uh, the appropriate care for the patients, all right, even uh, in the community, all right, the pharmacists. Uh, can counsel patients and do some um, uh, minor ailments, all right, prescription and so on. And depending on the specialty, uh, some of the uh, pharmacists are in, all right, they actually do see patients, all right. So, you know, it's very clear that uh, it's, yeah, it's very important. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, just to add on to that is that uh, I think the question was about what uh, with COVID and all this is really disrupting a lot of uh, different industry. Uh, and, and because of that, you find that um, uh, this, uh, in my talk, I also mentioned about uh, advancement in technology, uh, informatics and all that. And, and because of that, uh, in our new program, in Bachelor of Pharmacy program, we do include things like computational thinking, uh, health informatics, uh, this is basically to, just to uh, help you uh, to have a, a, another group of vocabularies that will help you to, to, to go into the workplace in the future and you will, uh, you will be able to fit in uh, uh, more easily. Um, as you can see also now in the hospitals, uh, many of the processes are already automated. And of course, uh, pharmacists are there to in fact, pharmacists are there in the first instance to help set up those automation. Without the pharmacists, you won't have automation, right? So pharmacists are still uh, very much needed. Uh, and, and, and automation is quite different from any other automation in the, in the other industries in that um, we always have to think about patient safety. And as pharmacists, uh, when you set up this automation, you got to make sure that uh, nothing goes wrong. 
all right, that uh, uh, the medication doesn't go to the wrong patient, all right? So this is where the input for the pharmacist is very important. And if you are also given some vocabulary or knowledge in computational thinking, uh, coding, and also uh, um, uh, informatics, all right, you will be able to work with uh, the developers, the engineers, for example, to develop this automation. Yeah. So these are, again, another example of expansion of roles. And to add on, right, for big tech, right, with um, you know, access to information readily right, in the social media, in the internet, it's more important now that you know, there are experts who can actually make sure that the information is um, accurate, right, that we know how to decipher the, the information. So with easy access to all sorts of information in the internet, right? whether it's through you know, Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, Google, and so on and so forth, right? the big tech. Um, yeah, so patients, as well as the general public, has all sorts of information available to them. But you know, are they all correct? Are they all true? All right? So we need to... Um, it's good that we have access to such information, but it's also very important to... Uh, be able to decipher, to discern what is uh, you know, true or what is fake news and so on and so forth, right? So contributions of, of pharmacists are still very important. And um, yeah, we do need to uh, prepare our graduates for the, the changing landscape, right? So that's why um, in the curriculum, there's bioinformatics, there's uh, health informatics, okay? Letting students... Uh, think more critically, all right, and to prepare for the new world, all right. So, you know, uh, the students have all sorts of uh, modules that they can take, okay, some are core, some are electives, and this also relate to uh, uh, another question about business, uh, uh, whether the course covers business opportunities. So, there are uh, electives that they can take depending on what they're interested in, all right, you know, there are marketing, uh, other things, yeah, you know, uh, so it depends on the individual students' aspirations as well as their interests. If they find that they are more interested in a particular area, they can even consider taking a minor, all right? So that's possible also. And uh, some students actually spend one year uh, in the uh, overseas colleges, all right, uh, to work in a, a startup company, all right? So that's NOC, yeah, uh, NUS overseas colleges, all right? Uh, to learn more, all right, and they come back with new found knowledge and you know, even uh, setting up their own companies, all right, yeah. So there are opportunities for you to learn uh, things that you are interested in. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ko. Dr. Ong, do you have anything to add? Um, maybe I have just one more point to add that um, the, we, we are seeing in the hospitals that there is actually a group of pharmacists that are actually piloting um, novel uh, individualized personalized therapy right, using patient's genetic information and uh, harnessing the power of uh, big technology. So in other words, we are using AI to together with the patient uh, genetic information to help the pharmacist as, uh, guide the clinicians or pro uh, work with the clinician to actually select the best drug therapy according to the patient's genetic profile. So there are many exciting uh, pilots that are going around and that uh, with the end point that we can actually make use of the technology together with what we know from the sciences that the pharmacy learned, apply them all together and make uh, drug therapy better for all the patients in the healthcare setting. Thank you, Dr. Ong. We have come to the end of the first Q&A session with our faculty members. We'll proceed on to the time for our pharmacy students. So they are also our MOHH scholars. So first, uh, I would like to introduce Wee Kang. Uh, Wee Kang, please. Thank you. Okay, all right, so I'll begin. All right, so a very good morning to everyone who is here today. So I am Wee Kang, currently a year two student in NUS Pharmacy and also a recipient of the Healthcare Merit Award. So together with Chi Hon, who will be sharing after me, we will actually be taking everyone through our journey in as a healthcare scholar in NUS Pharmacy. 
So for my presentation, I'll be sharing more about the various activities that I have, I have participated in the last uh, one and a half years, as well as about uh, give everyone an insight to what it's like being a student in NUS Pharmacy. So I hope that uh, I'll be able to excite and inspire you to join pharmacy as a healthcare scholar at the end of my presentation. Okay, so this is just an overview uh, of what I'll be covering today. So I'll start off by sharing about why I chose pharmacy. Next, I'll also be sharing about my journey in pharmacy. And I'll be sharing a little about what I do outside of pharmacy. And also, uh, uh, lastly, I'll also be sharing about how receiving the scholarship has actually complemented my experiences so far. Okay, so just a little background information about myself. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm currently a year two student. So previously, uh, I was from Tomasi Polytechnic. So I actually studied pharmaceutical science and I was awarded uh, the Healthcare Mary Award in 2019. And some of my non-academic activities. Uh, so currently I'm staying in Tempusu College. I'm also actively involved in the NUS Pharmaceutical Society, which I'll be sharing a little more later on. And I'm also uh, involved in tri-generational home care, which I'll also be sharing later on. Okay. So to start off first, I'll be sharing now about uh, why I chose pharmacy. So why I chose pharmacy, so actually I don't really have like a very uh, special reason or really a very unique kind of reason actually, it's actually a really cliche reason for why I chose pharmacy. So I had a really very strong interest right, in chemistry as well as biology. So I knew that I wanted a career actually involving uh, either one of the discipline, disciplines or best if I could actually have a career that actually incorporates both disciplines. And for me, I didn't want to do like pure sciences. Like I didn't want to do a bachelor's in life science. I didn't want to do a bachelor's in chemistry because I really wanted to trans, uh, translate my passion for the sciences okay, into something meaningful. So at that point of time, about three years ago, okay, when I was applying for university, how I defined uni meaningful was actually something that I wanted something tangible, I wanted something observable, and I wanted like, something fast. So what better way than actually making a difference in someone's life? So with taking these three uh, factors okay, into consideration, uh, pharmacy was like a natural choice for me. Okay, so for me, okay, uh, I guess I, had, I was fortunate also to have actually like uh, additional experiences because coming from a polytechnic, Okay, I had an opportunity to actually do like a six months internship at uh, Singapore General Hospital. So during that time, I actually had the opportunity to really like observe how pharmacies carry out their day-to-day -day activities, how they interact with patients and really uh, find out more about the profession itself. And subsequently, actually while waiting for enlistment, I also did like a three months uh, job stint at Tantan Sik Hospital as like a pharmacy assistant. So during that time, it's actually further reinforced okay, my, uh, uh, my interest okay, in the profession. And also again, had more opportunities to really talk to pharmacies, to see how a pharm uh, pharmacy is being run, etc. So with all of these experiences, uh, I was decided to actually join the profession. Yep, and so this is where I am today. All right, so just a little side note. So actually I feel that if for those who are actually still unsure whether like a pharmacy is for you, uh, I would highly recommend you actually take up this very short job stints, okay, as a pharmacy assistant. And because the really the best way to learn about the profession okay, is actually immerse yourself in the environment and really like talk to people who are currently working there and really find out uh, what the job is like. All right, so now I'll be moving on to the next section, which I'll be sharing about my journey in NUS Pharmacy. So the very first milestone okay, that I, every student, every pharmacy student will actually experience, in fact, every university student will experience is actually like the orientation camps. So for pharmacy, we actually organize our own pharmacy orientation camp. All right, so for my year in 2019, okay, it was titled Primordium, right, and this is like, uh, picture of my OG uh, after one of the activities that we completed. So during the orientation camp, so typically it is like a four days event with actually like a multitude of activities, okay, ranging from outdoor activities, okay, like for my year, okay, we had uh, one of the games, okay, at actually at West Coast Park. We also had web games, all right, and of course, what's uh, in the 
of course, during a camp, so there will be a lot of like noises, there'll be a lot of cheers, there'll be a lot of uh, festive spirit. Yeah. Okay, I think some of you might be thinking now, oh, it's really COVID-19. So definitely with COVID-19, uh, we are not able to actually organize like large scale events like that. But nevertheless, last year, okay, uh, we managed to actually transform the orientation camp into an on full online version. And it was still uh, really enjoyable and it still captured the essence of the orientation camp. So last year, it was actually titled Equinox. All right, and this is like, yeah, so we had it via Zoom. So this year, I think you all can look forward to actually having a hybrid-based camp. So there'll be some elements of a physical as well as an online element to it. So for myself, uh, I was fortunate to be able to participate in last year's uh, orientation camp, right, as welfare head, as well as the safety officer for the camp. So yeah, here's just a picture. So, uh, so this is me and that beside me is actually my partner in crime, uh, who's the other welfare head as well. And actually, this is like the committee that uh, welfare committee that was I, I that I was in charge of. Okay, so the next aspect of the camp, the orientation camp, a very key highlight is actually the signature house induction program. So every pharmacy student will actually be allocated to one of the five houses. The five houses are, firstly, Fleming, Galen, Pasture. Proctor, as well as Shaler. So these houses, okay, are actually named after eminent scientists or uh, uh, eminent scientists or pharmacists who have actually made significant contributions uh, to pharmacy or biomedical sciences. Each of the houses have also their own animal emblem, which embodies the different values of the prominent figures, as well as their own unique culture. So for myself, I was allocated to Galen. So the concept of houses actually came about to actually uh, form, uh, she came about uh, as a form of a support network for our L pharmacy students. So within uh, the houses, there will actually be what we call the senior junior pairing. So every junior will be paired uh, with a senior. So the, this senior will actually be there for you throughout your four years in pharmacy and be there to really uh, support you, be in academics or be in like, any problems you face in school. Also, every student will also be allocated to an academic mentor. So this will actually be a faculty member who will actually be looking out for you as well for your interests uh, throughout the four years in the program. And of course, uh, lastly, you'll also get the opportunity to really meet other people in the houses and uh, expand your social circle. Apart from that, houses also organize what we call house events. So during these house events, uh, you can it's a whole range of them. There are really so many different variations. There's like meet the prof sessions, like mooncake making. There's also like uh, barbecues. Of course, these were all pre-COVID. Uh. But now with COVID, there's also a lot of online engagement that's happening. Like maybe like brain teasers, things like that. So this is just some pictures of the house events. So you can see this is like uh, a session of meet the prof session. And this is actually one of the houses. Uh, having one of the mooncake making uh, events. And also uh, at the end of every semester, there will actually be like an inter-house league or inter-house event where all the five houses will actually come together to actually compete in a friendly competition. And moving on from orientation, okay, the next key highlight of a freshman journey will actually really be the Nusu Rag and Flag Day. So this is uh, a day where actually uh, different faculties will come together to put up uh, spectacular performances to really uh, show, to thank the donors who actually contributed to the flag collections. So our department has been participating in it for many years now, and we'll continue to do so this year as well. So for this year, uh, with the COVID-19 restrictions, there'll be a, a little twist to it, okay, but you, all of you can actually look forward to participate in this if you do decide to join pharmacy. Okay, so uh, earlier I actually mentioned a little about the NUS Pharmaceutical Society. So I'll just elaborate a little more here. So NUS Pharmaceutical Society is actually a student-led society in the Department of Pharmacy, like, responsible for enriching students' life. So they can, uh, in terms of professionally, academically, as well as leisurely. 
So currently, uh, the society consists of eight different committees as well as seven special projects. Okay, so for me, uh, I was fortunate to be elected into the uh, executive committee all right, as the vice president. So together with 13 uh, other people, uh, I had the opportunity, uh, with, sorry, together with 13 other people, uh, we work to actually run the organization on a daily basis. So my role, okay, as vice president is really to oversee the five houses. Okay, and as well as to manage like four internal committees, which actually includes like welfare, uh, essential medicine, which is actually the volunteering wing of uh, the society, media resource, as well as like the academics committee. Okay, so now I'll be moving on to the next section is sharing about uh, what I do outside of pharmacy. So outside of pharmacy, I'm currently staying in Tembusu College. So Tembusu College is actually part of the two years university town college program. So this is actually very similar to like halls. It's just that in addition to the residential life, uh, there's an element of uh, interdisciplinary learning. Okay, so for Tembusu College, our focus is on integrating science, technology, as well as society. Oh yeah, so this is like a picture of our college rector, uh, Professor Tobin Koh. Okay, so I'll just be now sharing a little uh, about what I did okay, uh, during the last one and a half years in Tembusu College. Okay, so this picture here is actually like a Tembusu formal dinner with all the other pharmacy students uh, in my batch. And yeah, so this is actually uh, one of the interest groups that I participated in, uh, Bought and Pace. So I'm an avid runner. So uh, this was a picture taken about trading for the inter-college games. And this picture here is actually a, a, a taken during a field trip for one of my modules where we actually visited a, a farm to actually see how food uh, begins from the soil all the way to the table. Uh, and here is actually one another interest group that I participated in called Tea Bake. So I had the opportunity to like learn how to do baking. And very similarly to like our, the pharmacy houses in Tembusu College, we are uh, also located to houses. And for me, I was located to the oral house. And another element okay, of Tembusu College is the interdisciplinary learning. So uh, during the last one and a half years, I had the opportunity to really learn uh, modules from uh, integrate uh, and learn knowledge from all different disciplines like social psychology, linguistics, uh, history, humanities in the bios medicine perspective, as well as uh, business while uh, learning negotiations, uh, how to prepare for a negotiation. So I think this is really, uh, this really shows that the, there's really a lot of vibrancy in university. There's really a lot of opportunities out there for you. And another thing that I'm actively involved in as well is in tri-generational home care. So this is actually an interprofessional health pro healthcare projects, which actually involves three generations, the elderly, university healthcare students, as well as uh, secondary school students. So the university healthcare students will actually uh, bring along the secondary school students to actually visit uh, the elderly at the home visits, to conduct home visits uh, for the elderly and actually really help them uh, improve uh, their living environment and also help them uh, resolve any kind of issues that they may be facing at, uh, at home. And so for me, I had the opportunity to really work together with students from other healthcare faculties like medicine, nursing, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, as well as social work. Uh, so yeah, so for me, I am part of the youth and mentoring committee where, okay, so where my role is really to actually organize trainings for the secondary school students to actually equip them with the, the necessary communication as well as the medical skills uh, that they will require for their home visits. So I was able to take the knowledge that I learned uh, from class, from school, uh, to actually teach, uh, translate this knowledge okay, into inspiring and teaching the youths. So in year one, I joined as like a subcommittee. And now currently in year two, I took on the role as the committee head. So 
Uh, upon joining pharmacy, okay, there's actually really a lot of interprofessional healthcare projects out there. So what I listed here is just uh, a few, one or a few of the many out there. So there'll be opportunities for you to like maybe learn sign languages, for you to do home visits with elderly, if that is your interest. And there's even like overseas uh, volunteering projects as well. So for the last segment, uh, it's actually about how my how receiving the scholarship complemented my experiences so far. Okay, so firstly, okay, by receiving the, uh, the scholarship, it has really uh, provided me with financial security. So with the scholarship, I did not need to worry about uh, school fees. I did not need to worry about hostel fees. I also did not need to worry about my daily expenses. So because of that, I was fortunate that I did not need to actually find like a part-time job to support my uh, expenses. So because of that, I was able to free up time and also be able to concentrate on my studies and also participate in all the various activities I mentioned earlier. Secondly, it's also uh, the support system that you receive from the fellow scholars. So upon being awarded the, H the scholarship, there'll be actually an induction program where you will get to meet other fellow scholars and you get to actually interact with them, things like that. So for me, actually, my closest friends, some of my closest friends today are actually those I met from the induction program. Okay, yeah, and also thirdly, it's actually the support system from the scholarship officer. So upon being awarded the scholarship, everybody will be uh, allocated an office, a scholarship officer. So this officer will actually be responsible uh, for your welfare as well as your interests uh, throughout your undergraduate years. So there'll be periodic check-ins by your scholarship officers. So you can actually highlight if you're facing really any issues, be it in your academic or non-academic matters, and they will be there to really support you. And there are also many uh, support programs in place. La. So if you ever find yourself like, in trouble, you can be re reassured that there are programs there to help you out. And lastly, also, uh, it has actually opened a door of opportunities. So as part of, as a scholar, you will be part of the Singapore Healthcare Society. So the society will actually organize really many different events where scholars can actually get to participate in, such, uh, such as self-development programs, like, like language classes, uh, overseas community projects, and also like professional networking sessions. Therefore, you can really enrich as well your university life. All right, so with this, I have come to the end of my presentation. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask me during the q and I will now hand over the time to Chi Hon, who will be sharing more. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Hui Kang. So hello everyone, I'm Chi Hon, a year four pharmacy student. Uh, so I'm currently doing my final year project. So before I begin, actually, I just wanna say a big thank you to all of you for joining us in this early morning talk. So I will also be sharing uh, about my own journey in NUS pharmacy as well as uh, under MOHH. So first of all, uh, I will share a little bit about myself. So uh, I'm from Anderson Junior College uh, and so I have very similar reasons why I joined pharmacy to uh, Wee Kang. So it's uh, actually very simple for me. Uh, I chose pharmacy because same thing, we, uh, I love chemistry and biology. And uh, I just wanted a meaningful career that aligned with my interests. So at that point of time, pharmacy seems like a straightforward answer to me. Lah. So uh, I didn't think twice, I just applied uh, pharmacy as a, as a course itself. So next, uh, uh, why did I apply for the MOHH scholarship? So other than being awarded the financial freedom to pursue my studies, MOHH also has this uh, scholar develop development framework, which provided me opportunities to develop myself as a leader and also as a future healthcare professional. So even from the very start, the get-go, uh, the very first scholars induction camp, you will already be grouped with uh, students from other healthcare disciplines and working together throughout the entire camp. So this is sort of uh, simulating an interdisciplinary healthcare team, which is the norm currently in the hospital, and also helping us build bonds uh, as a healthcare co What can you expect to experience in NUS pharmacy? So uh, in NUS and also under MOHH, there are 
plenty of opportunities out there for you to develop yourself and also to pursue your own interests uh, outside of the usual curriculum. So we have, uh, as mentioned by Wikang, we have clubs and societies such as the NUS Pharmaceutical Society. So under MOHH, we also have our uh, Singapore Healthcare Society for the scholars. So uh, if you are interested in planning for events uh, and conferences, we also have that. We have things like the, recently there was this uh, feature conference, which was a collaboration with the International Society of uh, Pharmaceutical Engineering. So uh, basically it was a conference to bring down experts to discuss about the latest issues in, um, in the biopharma in industry. So last year also Singapore uh, NUS hosted the Asia Pacific Pharmaceutical Symposium. Yeah, so these are the kind of events that you can expect to see and participate in or even organize and plan for it. So there also be, be a lot of uh, volunteering opportunities such as uh, at Pearls Hill Care Home. And also there's this flagship uh, volunteering event in NUS, which is called Know Your Medicine, Get It Right. So this particular event is very uh, interesting and insightful for the students actually. So the students, you will get to uh, pair with a licensed pharmacist where you'll be involved in reviewing the medications of the participants, uh, uh, reviewing the medication of uh, yeah, the participants in the neighborhood and helping them uh, get their medications right. So there are also a lot of internship opportunities. So now I'll share a little bit about what I have done throughout my, my journey as it is coming to an end. So it's sort of like a reflection for myself as well. So uh, in year two, uh, like we kind of also participated in the pharmacy orientation program. So for that, I was the games head. So uh, after attending my own uh, pharmacy orientation camp, I knew that I wanted to give back uh, or even provide the same or even better experience uh, for the incoming freshmen. So this led to me taking up this role and it was definitely a very uh, fulfilling and rewarding role, being able to see the smiles and laughter of the uh, freshmen and also helping them build lasting bonds. It, it was also a very good opportunity for us to regroup as a year twos and plan together activity, uh, come together and plan activities for the freshmen as well. So this, there's always, in pharmacy, we always focus on giving back. So we always give back uh, either to the next generation or the, to the community around us. So outside of pharmacy, actually, I also do varsity uh, sports, specifically chukball. And uh, I led the varsity team as captain for a year. Uh, so the funny thing is, looking back, uh, actually, I joined chukball at more of like a recreational sport in my residential college for, for distress, for me to distress. And just somehow, as slowly, people started asking me to uh, join the varsity to just try out. And it was uh, my first experience joining a competitive sports. And looking back, I'm glad like, that I took this leap of faith and joined the team. So currently, I'm, there's, no, there's no competition due to COVID, but I'm still playing regularly uh, with my friends. So uh, another highlight throughout my journey is actually there's this uh, MHH, uh, Overseas Community Involvement Program. So... Uh, me and my friends, we were, we saw this email from the uh, from MOHH requesting for pharmacy students to join as uh, to help with the dispensing operation of the medical mission trip. So me and my friends just decided to within a day we just decided to take up this challenge and and apply for it lah. Yeah, so uh, it was a very interesting medical mission trip. So we actually visited like four villages in Iloilo, Philippines. And uh, as pharmacy students, we were overseeing the entire dispensing operations. Uh. So throughout the entire four, four days of the medical mission, we managed to attend up to 700 plus villages. Uh, this was a, really a first real world opportunity for me to apply what I've learned in uh, ph pharmacy so far. Uh, there were a lot of difficulties faced. So first of all, uh, as we were in uh, rural areas, there was no internet connection where it was it's so prevalent for us in Singapore to whenever we don't know something, we'll just search it up and uh, get back to the person. But over there, yeah, due to the lack of internet, we, me and my friends, we collated all sorts of drug information based on the inventory and make sure that we, we have something to reference to when we are over there. And the next, is, uh, next issue that we faced was actually more of like a language barrier. So over there, the villagers, they don't really speak English. 
So uh, we really have difficulty communicating and telling them how should they be taking their medication and, uh, and so on. But luckily there was uh, a translator, uh, there was a few translators over there. And also uh, there was this nursing student with us as well who, who was uh, very eager to learn their language and even bought a book over there to, so that she could translate and for us, that kind of thing, yeah. Over there, one of the highlights of the trip was actually being able to perform, uh, really perform interventions for the patient. So even though we are just students, when we look at a prescription, we were still able to uh, intervene and make the pres uh, prescription safe for the patient. So ex for an example, occasionally the dose prescribed for a patient may not be appropriate and will require some changes. So uh, even though there's, uh, for instance, there's this uh, very simple case where uh, a child was given like a adult dosing of paracetamol. So even though it was a very small intervention, uh, it was nonetheless fulfilling la, to see how we as pharmacists can really impact and help our patient. Yeah. And this really provided a glimpse of what future work would be like for me. So uh, for pharmacy, because the curriculum is very rigorous, so every semester you have uh, core modules to attend to, you won't have the opportunity to actually uh, join like a semester exchange in uh, overseas university. But there are definitely other opportunities that you can find, such as uh, you having attending summer exchanges or you can attend uh, winter exchanges. So for me, actually I attended a uh, summer exchange at Cambridge University. So I attended like very interesting courses because uh, they were over there, they, the course was conducted by people who are really conducting research at the forefront. So things like talking about how memories are formed, uh, what the psychological perspective of uh, memories, or talk about autism, is it really a disease, uh, the kind of interesting topics. And also I get to meet a lot of friends from all over the world. So actually all this, it would not have been possible uh, also with, without the support of MOHH. So MOHH is also very, also very supportive of us exploring and uh, going for this type of uh, causes. So really my message to you guys is uh, uh, in NUS pharmacy or in university itself, it's a very safe space for us to explore and really discover more about ourselves. So moving on, I will talk about like uh, my final year as in pharmacy school. So uh, even though our curriculum will be a bit different, so I'm currently still in the old curriculum, the Bachelor of Science Pharmacy, while you guys are in the Bachelor of uh, Pharmacy, will be applying for Bachelor of Pharmacy. Uh, the final year will be quite similar in a sense that it comprises of uh, two main aspects, your pre-employment clinical training as well as a capstone project for you guys, but a final year project for me. Lah. So each of which will spend over one semester. So this uh, pre-employment clinical training, the objective is really to help us uh, transition from a pharmacy graduate to a competent and trusted professional who can practice independently lah, as a member of the pharmacy profession. So there, are four, there will be four rotations for uh, this PECT, but only if the first two rotations, rotation one and two, as you can see, uh, will be conducted while you are a pharmacy undergraduate. So you'll be uh, doing rotations in community care as well as uh, indirect patient care or ambulatory care. So for myself, I attended uh, for my community rotation. I did it at uh, Unity Pharmacy at Bukitima Plaza. And uh, for my indirect patient care rotation, I did it at uh, Novartis Singapore Private Limited. So for my indirect patient care rotation, I did it in a department called the Ethics, Risk and Compliance Department. So for the job scope is uh, very interesting. It's uh, more of a commercial role. So my job was really to convey the role of compliance as an enabler of clean, sustainable business practices. And also we're constantly monitoring risk in the companies. So uh, the roles, the things that we do, such as uh, what we look at is actually how a sales professional interacts with healthcare professionals. Uh, and see whether it is, is it done at a, in an ethical level. And also we, we are constantly reviewing promotional or non-promotional materials, uh, make sure that they're up to the regulatory standards. 
So these are the, uh, what I've learned over there is actually the backend processes of drug development, sales and marketing, and also the regulatory work. And also this, this internship is actually a very good reminder that the, the outside world, uh, it does not have a model answer for everything. And that uh, people around you like, are constantly trying to find an answer uh, together with you. So unlike school where actually the answer seems clear cut and usually given by the professors. So uh, my point is, so do not be afraid to ask questions and the team, let the team explore together with you. Mm -hmm. So next I'll talk about my community care rotation. So my job scope was uh, as a, at the Unity Pharmacy was actually to provide uh, efficient and accurate dispensing service with appropriate patient counseling under the supervision of the pharmacies over there, and also provide information and advice on products and health related matters to customers. So some takeaways from that rotation will be uh, that it is a great opportunity for you to put in, put the clinical knowledge that you have gathered throughout the three years to good use. Although along the way, you will still pick up additional knowledge about medications, which you have not encountered in school. But um, rather than the technical and hard skills, I would say the most difficult aspect of being a pharmacist was actually the communication with customers. So at times I'm really glad that uh, back in school, our school conducts like um, simulation, uh, counseling simulation for us to practice, which uh, is very much applicable in the real world. So slowly at the end of the rotation, I managed to at least develop a more systematic way of counseling and also interacting with the customers. Yeah, so this, this uh, rotation was really an eye opener for me. Like, there's so much more for us, despite the four years of education, there's so much more for us to learn, so much more for us to know, and so much more that we can ultimately have to contribute back uh, to the community. Uh, so uh, I have already completed my, my PECT as a NUS undergraduate, and now I'm in my final team doing my final year project. So I just, share a little bit about my final year project because uh, actually it's for me it's quite an interesting project uh, you can just ignore the jargon here lab. so basically what i am trying to do uh, my final year project is trying to do is to confirm consumption of uh, a particular synthetic cannabinoid which is an illicit drug yeah, in singapore so with so it is a very interesting role for me because uh, as a pharmacy student, we can see how our pharmacokinetic knowledge, our uh, knowledge on metabolism come into play to help even solve this kind of real world issues. So uh, like what uh, our professors alluded to, there's really a lot of other career opportunities for pharmacy students because of the wide ranging knowledge that we actually have. So now that I'm nearing the end of my uh, sharing session. So if you ask me if pharmacy life is going to be tough, I would not like to you. Eh? It's definitely gonna be tough. But if we understand and stand by our belief that pharmacists, what we do and learn is going to impact countless of people. And if you're ready to make that impact, I assure you that you'll be able to pull through and look forward to every day of learning and going to work. So this is something I really observed in my preceptor back in my community care rotation. She's someone who is so passionate about her craft. She's constantly upgrading herself, attending workshops, causes, uh, new things such as a smoking cessation workshop, uh, helping their, uh, her patient quit smoking. This, all this just trying to improve her care for a patient. Yeah, these are the kind of uh, spirit that I see out there in the real world. Uh. So for those who are still unsure, uh, I urge you to really, like what we can say, talk to a pharmacist or observe them, find opportunities to shadow them and see if it's really right for you. So once you have decided uh, this is for you, uh, I believe you'll have a very fulfilling time in school and also in your career ahead. So if you have the passion, pride and purpose for our profession, come and join us, uh, join the family. Yep, thank you.
Thank you, Chi Hon. Thank you, Wee Kang, for your wonderful sharing. We actually do have quite a number of questions for you guys. So just a little quick fun fact, I'm actually Wee Kang Scholarship Officer. And I actually joined uh, Chi Hon on the Ilo Ilo medical mission. So it's there's kind of like a very good close bond between the, the three of us uh, in some sense. Yeah, so it's quite a fun fact. So if you join us with MOH Holdings, uh, you will have a scholarship officer that's going to be tagged to you. And we are very invested in your uh, curriculum, your, your, your personal life also, and how you are going to proceed as a professional. Yeah, so let's move into the questions. So the first question is, do you need to have a very strong portfolio to receive the scholarship? Uh, uh, a question could be, did you have a very strong portfolio? <laughs> I very, so I wouldn't say I have a very strong portfolio because uh, actually in JC, I don't think I attended, I participated in a lot of things, take out a lot of leadership roles. But I think what MOHH is actually looking for is really the passion in you to serve. So really to, throughout the interview, they will keep probing you and trying to understand why you want to, why are you applying for this scholarship? Uh, where do you see yourself uh, ultimately? What do you want to do? So they are trying to understand uh, where you want to go. La. So from there, if they see the passion in you, I think uh, they will have no, they won't, they will consider you la, definitely. So I think for me, uh, I guess another aspect of that, I think apart from passion, I think they're also really looking out uh, for your interest, okay, for the interest in healthcare, working in the healthcare, and also of course, how are you as a person? So I think for my interview, because maybe I was from a polytechnic, so I guess like my passion for the pharmacy is kind of really uh, fixed in the sense that they can tell already. So I think what for me, they were looking out more for how I'm a communicator. How do I actually communicate um, my interests, things like that. So communication skills is also another thing that's really important apart from like a portfolio as well. Yeah, you must be able to like, really convince the interviewers that uh, you are, that giving you the scholarship is something that uh, yeah, you're, like, you're deserving of the scholarship. Right? Yeah, both uh, in terms of your passion and your abilities as well. Yep. Thank you. Okay, the next question is, how is the pharmacy course? Is it very intense? <laughs> okay, I think, okay, so I'm, like what Chion mentioned, uh, like, uh, we are not going to lie, it's really quite rigorous in the sense that uh, because like what Prof Tree mentioned earlier during his presentation, uh, pharmacy is a very unique uh, healthcare course in this because we really integrate a lot of sciences like from chemistry, pharmacology, pharmacokinetics, uh, medicinal chemistry, so many. Uh, we are integrating all of these sciences and translating them into like patient care. So definitely there's, uh, a, lot, there's a lot of rigor because you need to be very skilled in different aspects of sciences. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it is like more intense than any other university courses because I think all university courses are intense as well. Uh, just that uh, I would say that pharmacy, for pharmacy, I guess the workload tends to pick up a bit faster than others. So if you are not consistent, it tends to uh, get very intense. La. Yeah. I think I'll touch on a little bit. La. So uh, my friends usually has been asking me why my dark circles are so bad. <laughs> But actually, all along, I just tell them all along, it's been so bad. <laughs> but uh, actually, yeah, it's definitely very intense. But there is definitely time for you to do other, uh, pursue your other, your other interests and also uh, discover yourself in the university and join other activities rather than just studying. So the more important thing is also manage your time and also manage your expectation. And yeah, know, know how much to give. Lah. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, okay, yes, oh, go yeah, ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so I think the other beauty really like for pharmacy because you are learning so many disciplines of sciences is really very interesting. Uh, so I think uh, if you're really interested in uh, learning different types of sciences, this will be something that the pharmacy course can provide for you. Uh, that is, differentiates us from other healthcare courses. Yeah. Thank you. So relating to the next question is, what are the challenges that you have faced and what, how did you overcome it? So I think this is cost related. Any challenges that you have faced during the course? Challenges that I faced. And how did you overcome it? Uh, I think along the way, there is definitely there will definitely be a lot of challenges. Uh, whether is it uh, your curriculum wise or your outside activities, but I think in uni, as I say, it's um 
all about discovering yourself. So it's also discovering ways for you to cope with stress and also ways for you to uh, handle this kind of uh, conflicts in schools and also uh, outside. Yeah, so I don't think there is like very specific challenges that I can remember, but I feel like uh, with the right mindset, definitely you can overcome it. Lah. There's nothing too hard. Mm. Uh, for me, okay, I think my biggest challenge I think university was actually I think my first semester coming to university. So I think it's like the transition period uh, for every universe, like every student coming in. So I remember that period was quite tough for me because uh, I was not used to the rigor of university education because in university, uh, it is no longer about like regurgitating, uh, regurgitating knowledge from the textbooks or just memorizing lecture notes. It is really a lot about applying the knowledge, understanding the content, and really being able to apply it to real world problems. So I immediately faced a little problem, a difficulty in adjusting to such a learning style uh, at the beginning. So how I actually overcome it is really uh, through the support system, like through my friends, uh, like actually on my other fellow scholar, like I met this really good friend who really like supported, helped me through my first semester. Like really, he really like uh, uh, spent a lot of time teaching me the, the content, things like that. So it's really important to really like uh, have a support system. Yeah, so I think that's how I overcome it during my first semester. Yeah, but now I'm doing okay. So I got the hang of it. Yeah, things are better. Yep. It's good. So we noted from both of your presentations that you all have quite a lot of commitments. So I think there are a few questions asking, how do you all cope between studies and your commitments? How do you find the right balance? <laughs> Right balance. Hmm. Okay, I okay, maybe I can answer first. Okay, I think for me, like, okay, I think it's a very like uh again it's a very cliche answer, but I think it's really about prioritizing. Like for me, uh when it comes to you know SM periods, I will okay, I will do kind of like not say drop my commitments, but I have to focus more attention into my studies and like other things like maybe my other like maybe leadership positions, like not urgent stuff, they can take a back seat, back seat for a while. And then after I finish my exams, then okay, time to work on those stuff, something like that. So for me, I, the way I do it is by actually prioritizing, which is more important uh, at the point of time. Uh, and I just work uh, accordingly. Yeah. Mm, for me, very similar points. La. So if you, I, I believe if you plan your time well, uh, it, you will do fine over here. Because as you can see, uh, even, even in school for the curriculum wise, the workload is not, it's not like a full all along. It's going to be tough throughout the entire semester. There's going to be ups and downs. So there, there will be, there will be uh, times where there's a lot of exams, that time with a lot of uh, homeworks. So you, and usually these are all given beforehand. Like the professor tell you these are the assignments, these are the exams due. So plan your time accordingly. Uh, definitely you'll be able to do it. So for me, uh, actually, because I was playing competitive sports, so my training was like four times a week, four to five times a week. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, it was constantly studying at night, training, come back, wash up. And okay, I'll just try to clock some time to study and I just... Uh, still get ample amount of sleep. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe to also add on, like, maybe uni like the beauty of university education is the freedom. Right? Like, you are really in control of your own time, per se, because uh, unlike in like, maybe JC or Poly, like, in university, all the examination dates will be made available to you right from the beginning. All the assessment, different uh, checkpoints, like maybe CAs, tests will all be made known to you earlier. So at the start of the semester, you'll be able to like plan your whole schedule like for the whole semester already. So if you can, uh, so I guess to really effectively manage, you also takes a lot of good planning. And some of my friends, they really like every semester, at the start of every semester, they will start to plan what are the key dates, what dates should block out, things like that. Yeah, so if you have actually these very good habits, uh, you'll definitely be able to find time to actually explore your interests like in other areas. Next question, I think is for both of you too. So how are you chosen or do you apply for such leadership positions? I think this is within your school. Uh, within the school, actually all these leadership positions, you, you will apply for it. Lah. So there's really a lot of opportunity. So uh, the, 
the message for you guys is actually just don't FOMO and just apply whatever you see. Because <laughs> uh, if you really see like a, 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 see a strong interest, don't just see whether oh, my friends are applying for this, let's apply. So this, this is the kind of reasons why your workload starts to pile. But uh, prioritize, the, decide what is your, where your passion lies, what is your interest and apply accordingly. And especially when you see you have a vested interest and also a passion for that particular project, you definitely know how to allocate time for it and also for your studies. Yeah. Uh, so actually a lot in university, a lot of things are really self, you have to self-source in the sense that uh, you will have to really apply on your own owners. So there will a lot be like a lot of like uh, posters, recruitment posters are being posted. So if you're interested, just go for it. Like because you are never know like uh, what the interviewers are looking for or how are you being selected for it. So just go for it. And like what Chihon mentioned, if you are really a vested interest in the particular project or the particular area, uh, you'll definitely be able to find time for it. So like for me, I'm really interested in working with youths, teaching youths. So like that's why I actually applied for like, tri-generational home care. Yeah, and I got in also, like, even though I did it like, alone. Yeah, so just go for it because university is like the so-called last opportunity for you to really do such things uh, when you go into the working world uh, you i don't think you will have a lot of time to do this stuff all this kind of stuff yeah okay this question is directed to we kang so would you recommend a diploma graduate to immediately apply for further studies or to work in the industry before doing so okay so for this personally um okay, so i have actually friends who are from both spectrums okay for me myself i applied once i completed my uh, diploma. Uh, of course, for me, I knew what I wanted to do, which is like pharmacy, because of all the different experiences I had. So it was quite a clear choice for me. But for some of my friends, uh, when they were a little unsure about what they wanted to do, they chose to take like a gap year. So like for the females, because they didn't need to serve army, so they actually took one year to like go and work in the farm hospitals or to work in the industry to really find out whether it is for them. Uh, or they maybe they use the time to go and explore other areas like maybe labs to see if uh, they are interested in maybe life sciences, things like that. So uh, I would say that if you are very clear, you know this is what you want to do, just apply uh, for university. Don't, I wouldn't say waste your time, but don't, uh, yeah, just like maximize like, the opportunity. Yeah, it's, I think it's better if you could you start earlier or so. Yeah, then if you are unsure of what you want to do, uh, you can just take a gap year as well to explore what you want to want to do, and then uh, it's not too late also to actually apply afterwards. Yeah. Thank you, Wikang. Next question is to Chi Hon. So this is regarding your PECT rotation. Which one do you find more interesting, the indirect patient care or community care? Uh, that's a that's a very tough question, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say there's a uh, one is more interesting than the other. Both have their unique points, lah. So. For the indirect patient care, it's really an opportunity to open up your eyes to, to the back end of the drug development spectrum and also to see all the, the different uh, sales and marketing stuff and the commercial side of things. But uh, that was a, it was a, it's not what you learn in school. So def, do, when I was there, it was definitely constantly absorbing new stuff, constantly learning and also constantly trying to contribute back to the company as well. But for the community care, it's, uh, it's more of me tr really, uh, because uh, as an MOHC scholarship, a scholar, at the end of the day, I'm going to be practicing as a clinical pharmacist. So for me, the community care rotation was a very important rotation for me to really uh, practice my craft and also uh, to, yeah, to learn more. So during the, I, I would say I'm more laid back during the indirect patient care rotation. And uh, during the community care, I'm really trying to go all out to learn and also learn from my preceptor to see how it, how it's done. But I would say that the community care rotation also brings out the auntie in me. Yeah, because over there, I'm working in like a unity pharmacy, constantly talking to like uh, aunties, uncles, and also trying to get their lingo. And really just, it makes me just trying to uh, build like a bond with them. And so, so, so the communication is really, uh, it's, a, it's a different level. Uh. So in indirect patient care, you're communicating with your colleagues. Then in the community care, you're, really, you're communicating with your patient, your customer. It's a, really a totally different experience. Mm. So yeah, 
both both rotation are definitely interesting. Like, so wouldn't wouldn't uh, choose one over the other. Thank you, Chi Han. So the next question is: How's a typical week for you? Will there be any days without any lessons or practicals, or how do you spend the? How do you spend each day in school? Uh, I don't think you'll have like days <laughs> with no lessons <laughs> in pharmacy course. Yeah, so usually it's quite packed. Uh, usually each I would say each day you have around at least six hours of lessons. Yeah around six hours of lesson. But after that, you're, you're free to do what you want. So there's definitely breaks in between and at night is your own free time. Uh, so for me, tendency for me is, because previously I stayed in a Richfield uh, residential college. So it's very near to our faculty. So it's just every time there's lesson, I will just go over. And sometimes I will just come back to my college and rest and do my own things. I'll even take a nap before I go back for my, another class. Yeah. So at night, then I go for my trainings. Yeah. So there'll be pockets of time for you to study and also pocket for time for you to go and enjoy outside with your friends. Mm. So I think for me, like, uh, because me and Chihon, we are part of the uh, old curriculum per se. So our time, uh, it is like that uh, typically like we have a lot of lectures, we have a lot of tutorials, so it's quite packed uh, our days. But for the, the new curriculum that you are going to be joining, uh, it is actually much more uh, less packed in the sense because you don't have so much lessons like us because a lot of the learning will actually take place offline. So you have to learn first and then before coming to class. So more time will be spent uh, like at home or uh, doing your own self-directed learning. And then when you come to class, you will engage in things like team-based learning. So where it's actually really active learning. Yeah, so it's no longer like the prof just stands in the lecture theater and just uh, read out the lecture, like just go through the lecture slides. They'll be like asking a lot of questions. Uh, so it's quite a different way of learning, which I personally, I think is really also a very uh, important transformation. Uh. Yep. Uh, so I would say that uh, it's a bit will be a bit more freedom. Your your timetable will be more free, so don't worry about like having to be in school for eight to six every day, lah. It's quite unlikely. Uh, you will need to go go through this. Yeah, especially now with COVID also, where uh, our learning learning now is mostly online uh, via Zoom. Yep. Thank you. We have time for one last question. So, what do you think are the key attributes of a pharmacist? So probably you can sum up in maybe two words. Uh, I would say detail-oriented and also uh, yeah, process-driven. So uh, this, this is the kind of uh, process-driven, what I mean is uh, really, and this, this is the kind of skill that you slowly develop as you go through school and also when you start working as a pharmacist, you really, because Currently, if, like in year one, I would say that when I look at a prescription, I will look at it in a very haphazard way. It's just, I'm just look, looking at random places, trying to find fault in a prescription. But throughout the years, you will see as we develop how we should uh, have a process to, to evaluate a particular prescription and go through it. So uh, detail-oriented also, because uh, there's really a lot of things you need to look out for, like, um, Sometimes it's not just the numbers on a patient's uh, parameters. Sometimes it's also about, more about communicating with your patients and probing more questions to understand uh, their own problems. Yeah, what, the, what are the problems that they are facing? Uh. So I think these two are very important aspects as a pharmacist. Yeah. So uh, for me, I think the two key attributes like, of a pharmacist, like, I really believe it is like, passion and being hardworking. Because uh, as a healthcare professional, I think this applies to all healthcare professionals. Like, uh, as you know, like uh, Singapore is actually like en uh, entering the silver tsunami, so patient load is actually like getting heavier every year. Working in a uh, restructured hospitals is going to be very busy. There's really going to be a lot of things to do. So I think you really need these two elements: a passion for really patient care, as well as you must be a hard worker like, for you to really uh, not in the sense that not lose yourself. Yeah, to the fatigue, to the burnout, things like that. So I think these are really two attributes of a pharmacist that you, that a pharmacist should have to really go the long run. Yeah. 
Thank you, Chihon and Wikang for your sharing and for answering all the questions. So we have come to the end of this session and we hope that you have benefited from the sharing. So if you have enjoyed the session, please take a few seconds to rate the program at the bottom, of, bottom left of your screen. So we have our next session coming up that's at 11 a.m. with um, National University of Singapore for their Bachelors of Science in Nursing. So join us as we hear from the student ambassadors as they share more about their student life. So we look forward to seeing you guys and go and have fun. See you all. Thank you.